I don't know why I keep buying coffee at this dumb place. Should make my own coffee. But uh, every time I go there, there's these young teenage girls that give me the evil eye. You know, it's not like I'm <laughs> winking at them or anything like that. I don't know why. They must think like, oh, there's that fat bull guy ordering another coffee. <laughs> I don't know. Why do I do that? Why do I spend five bucks on a cup of coffee? I don't believe in wasting money. That is a waste of money, but at least it's not burnt, horrible coffee served to you by pseudo-intellectual elitists at <coughs> Starbucks. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Let's talk about uh, natural order regarding magnetism. I always find it funny and extremely irksome that people will accuse me of saying things that I never said. There are a few YouTube channels. I won't name which ones they are, and I don't even watch their videos that uh, will use my source material to back up their source material. You know, as if I've ever said, and this is kind of funny, by the way, that, I've ever, that if, and I've never even made the implication that the earth is like that. Yeah? Every time someone says that, I tell them, call me from the edge. Right there, just a little phone call. It's like, hello? I'm, I'm at the edge. <laughs> I never said anything, even hinting at support for that sort of, I don't use the word silliness. And once again, I don't care what people believe. It's, it's utterly of no concern to me whatsoever. But please, whatever you do, you can hate me, but don't, don't say I said things in support of things that I never said I was ever supporting. Because I haven't. I have attacked notions of false conceptions of gravity endlessly, but I never said gravity didn't exist. The phenomena of gravity, doesn't matter what we call it, doesn't matter what we deem it or attribute it to be, but this phenomena is what we would call, <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? Undeniable. <laughs> so I've never said stuff like that. Please don't accuse me of debunking this phenomena, okay? I have debunked what it actually is, and of course, gravity is not a force. It's the complete opposite of a force. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. That's an idea that has existed for many, many thousands of years due to the lodestone. Ancient Greeks, Indians, Egyptians, and Chinese, and other cultures, I think even their earliest records are Chinese, would find lodestones. It was fascinating how they would actually jump to one another. Of course, we grew, not really grew, but kind of grew to understand, well, there's magnets here, and so this must be magnetic attraction. No, it's completely ludicrous. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. It is, by definition, force in motion, centrifugal divergence, the mutual acceleration, not of two magnets towards one another, the same as two uh, masses, larger masses, like in the Cavendish experiment. They're actually accelerating towards a null pressure point in the ether. They're not accelerating towards one another, let me restate that again, but towards the lowest pressure point between the two. Now, between the two is, doesn't mean exactly between the two, because if this is a mass, say, ten times larger than this mass, then between the two, lowest pressure point might be here relative to this, so it's not directly in the middle. So, we say between the two, we have to be a little bit more specific. The devil is in the details. Um, but what is gravity? Gravity is a hole in the pressure of the ether. Magnetism's geometry specifically is the torus, or the toroid. Magnetism creates space. As Nikola Tesla famously said, gravity has no properties. It only has attributes. Gravity, I mean, excuse me, not gravity. Uh, space, excuse me, let me back it up a second ago. Um, the space has no properties. It has attributes. Space is exactly like a shadow. A shadow has attributes. If you stand in a shadow, you'll feel cold, but it has no properties. Um, space is the absence of the dielectric. It's a low pressure point in the ether due to the force in motion three-dimensional S-curve, which is what magnetism is. And by the way, the extrapolation of a three-dimensional S-curve. If you take a piece of wire, bend it like an S, take each end and bend it inverse to one another, you'll actually have the interior geometry. This is a gold apple, yeah? This is, an apple, of course, is an oblate toroid. Interestingly enough, if you actually bisect a perfect apple, it'll have the volume of uh, phi to one. 
The same reason why we have different magnetic effects on living systems is due to geomagnetic precession, okay? And also to the lag therein, the lag created from that torsion, which has a frequency. It's also called the Lamore frequency. The average Lamore frequency is 42 megahertz. It varies up and down from that, but that's the average of the Lamore frequency. So what is gravity? Gravity is just nothing other than a hole in the pressure of the ether, a divergent centrifugal magnetic force, the centrifugal force in motion, which creates the toroidal geometry of magnetism, generates that thing that human beings call space. Now, a shadow is not a thing. We all have an idea of what a shadow is. Someone stands in a bright light, they cast a shadow. There's a shadow. Human beings, their number one mistake when it comes to scientific and empirical knowledge, a higher platonic knowledge, which is lacking in the average human being, is concept reification. Like waves and shadows and space, these all have the exact same conceptual reification fallacy within the minds of nearly every human being. And you're not taught this stuff in high school or college. A shadow is not a thing. It is not a principle. Sure it is. I look up shadow in a dictionary. There's a noun there. This is what a shadow is. A shadow is not a thing. There's a noun in the dictionary, but a shadow is not a thing. It's an absence of light. If I stand in a shadow, I feel cold, and I can't see as well, so it does have properties. Well, those are attributes. But once again, attribute reification. By the way, a shadow is consubstantial upon the matter and the light, which is being blocked by that matter. But a shadow is not a thing. Space is exactly like a shadow. And by the way, all of this, if you read into it much further, which I'm not going to do in this video, firmly establishes something that I thought earlier in life was just New Age hokum. Um, a broken clock is right twice a day. Well, one of the things that the New Age movement got right, and I have all the books on this, every one of them, so don't mention them to me, because I already have them. The holographic universe, the holographic paradigm. Everything in the universe is a holographic paradigm, just as every science teacher taught you. Well, every atom is 99.99999% empty space. In other words, an atom, actually what they're trying to say, but they can't say it because they lack the intellect, is that every atom is an electrostatic balloon. Yeah? It's a little dynamo. Every little atom is nothing other than a dynamo. Most of its volume doesn't exist. It is really the volume, the same volume created by magnetism. Anyway, we have the conjugate geometry of the universe, the toroidal geometry of magnetism, and then we have the counterspatial or anti-Cartesian geometry, i.e. the hyperboloid or hourglass-shaped geometry of the dielectric. Yeah? And if you actually take the hourglass, which I think everybody could picture an hourglass in their head, right? You have these uh, two barbells in the center. There's this uh, pinch point. Any two masses are accelerating towards the erasure of space. Space is the after effect of a divergent magnetic field, right? The erasure of that space of mutual mass acceleration, yes, is nothing other than ether torsion. So what is gravity? Gravity is just a hole in the pressure that we would call the ether. Non-Cartesian pure potential. Everything else is just an ether modality. Yeah. We never see the waters on a calm, glassy surface until we create waves. Once again, space, um, shadow, and waves are one of the thing, same thing. These concept reification. There's no such thing as a wave. A wave is what something does, not what something is. It's the attribute phenomenalization of something else. The same thing with space is the concept reification of the after effect of the volume of a toroidal, i.e. magnetic, volume. This is a three-dimensional force vectorization of the loss or energy of the dielectric. That magic formula that was my discovery is tattooed right here on the inside of my right wrist. That's one over five to the power of negative three. Explaining that would literally take about days. So I'm not going to do that. So, what must be filled by deflating the torus of the magnetism of the mass? i.e. mutual mass acceleration. So we're talking about deflating the balloon. And of course, in the case of magnetism, the balloon of magnetism is shaped like a torus or a donut shape or an apple shape. And people say, why is there differences in... Uh, water is a polar molecule, for example, and it is affected uh, by magnetic fields, but magnetic fields have a phase due to geomagnetic precession and the lag therein. So is the reason why uh, seeds are exposed to South Pole, you know, grow better, grow faster, grow more healthy than those exposed uh, by the North Pole. There's also, too, the reason why 
There's magnetic effects from magnetic therapy. Um, you know, the stupid little magnetic bracelets that people, with, you know, those don't do anything. It requires a big old powerful magnet, the very minimum of which would be like a two by two by one inch. I don't give medical advice. I'm not going to delve into that topic any further because then I would be accused of giving medical advice to somebody. But magnetic therapy does work. It has to be done correctly, but I'm not going to mention anything about that since I'm not giving medical advice for obvious logical reasons. Then anyway, so-called gravity is just a low pressure zone of ether rarefaction, which moves towards equalization. This is so important in explaining what gravity is. Let me state it one more time, please. So-called gravity is a low pressure zone of ether rarefaction. Yeah. Know the difference between rarefaction and compression. Ether rarefaction, which moves towards equalization. So once again, I've never debunked this phenomena. You know, this phenomenon is undeniable. I love it when people say, you, you, <laughs> you debunked gravity. <laughs> no, I debunked ideas about gravity. Gravity is not a force. You know, all this other nonsense. It's, uh, it's craziness that we have about gravity. Or uh, gravity is autonomous field modality. It's completely not true at all. It's the same notion of magnetic attraction that's existed for thousands of years. Every scientist out there, and I mean this literally. Well, I'll take a sip of coffee, excuse me. Every scientist out there suffers under the same 100% conviction that magnetic attraction... What happens, Mr. Zionist, when there's, you know... Well, that's magnetic attraction. So really, some magnets accelerate towards one another? Yes. And is that acceleration? In the case of these magnets jumping towards one is that magnetism? Well, that's what we call, call it magnetic attraction. That's ridiculous. That's a fallacy of composition. These two things are magnets. Around them is a magnetic field. So logically, therefore, we must say that when they accelerate towards one another, it's magnetic attraction. Every scientist on this earth, scientist, I use that word loosely, scientist, <laughs> suffers under this exact same ludicrous, absurd, illogical, nonsensical belief. What it is is a belief system. It's not logical. It's not rational. It doesn't follow Occam's razor. It doesn't follow anything sensible anything based in wisdom, that that acceleration is magnetism. It's like, no, we have two magnets accelerating towards one another, but that doesn't imply or assume, nor is it magnetic attraction. In other words, that acceleration. We call it attraction, I don't care. That's not magnetism at all. It's the complete opposite of magnetism. If you want to know what true magnetism is, you take two like poles, you try to squeeze them together, and you can only get them so close. There is real magnetism. This is the difference between... Constructive interference and destructive interference. When you have a point source perfect polarization of an object, and that's what a magnet is, because a magnet, are you listening closely? Yeah, is not a quantity, it's a quality. Because before a magnet, and you could find YouTube videos on the creations of magnet, before a magnet becomes a magnet, it is 100% quantitatively identical before as it is after. Yeah. The quality that defines a magnet is that point source field incommensurability where in which things become not additive but multiplicative where all the atoms and molecules of the neodymium iron boron, samarium cobalt, or uh, iron ferrite are now point source. And then the field extends, it doesn't extend, it exists outside of the object. And that's what fascinates people about magnets. Wow, it's got this field around it. That field, of course, is a toroidal sphere. Um, torus, excuse me. It's still roughly a sphere, but it's toroidal that extends around the magnet. And that is magnetism. If you have two like poles, try to squeeze them together, we have, yeah, constructive interference. We have increase. You have to apply more and more and more pressure. You're never going to get them close enough together. But if you flip them around, we have unlike polarities. Yeah. And magnets don't actually have poles. There's another secret, of course, I've talked about endlessly that people don't seem to get, because you could take any magnet, slice it a million times, each slice will have a north pole and a south pole. You actually have incommensurability of the three-dimensional force vector that defines your magnetic precession, i.e. the magnet, within each slice. Yes, a magnet doesn't actually have polarity. But you have destructive interference, whereby which ether torsion is very quickly nullified if you have two unlike polarities of two different magnets. 
north and south, south and north, doesn't make any difference. Well, they'll accelerate towards one another, but that's not magnetism. That's dielectric acceleration, specifically point source acceleration. Once again, the, the only distinction between two um, masses accelerating towards a null pressure point in the ether is the same distinction between a light bulb and a laser. One is point source and the other one is non-point source. Don't use the word coherent. We can say coherent, but what they are is point source. Same reason why a 5 watt laser is dangerous as heck and will burn through stuff, but a 5 watt light bulb is useless for even reading a book by. 5 watts is 5 watts, yeah, but one is additive, in case of a light bulb, and the other one is multiplicative because it is a point source object. That's the exact same thing a magnet is. Because that's the only thing that actually defines a magnet. Yeah, is that it is now a point source incommensurable object and fascinates people that the field extends ab extra to the physical object itself. So what is gravity? Gravity is just a hole in the pressure of the ether. I have at no point in time ever denied this. Yeah? And I've never said, <laughs> I've never said, I've never said that the earth is like this. If you think it is, please, God, call me from the edge right here. You know, whip out your cell phone because I'm at the edge. <laughs> Send me a picture on the edge too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the lowest pressure mediation of mass, by the way, is spherical. Yeah, the magnetic field, of course, is toroidal, but the lowest pressure, and this is not spherical, but it's kind of spherical, is like this. Yeah, it's not like that sand dollar. <laughs> People always love to say I say stuff that I never said. We love you because you denied gravity. I never denied this phenomena. I just said it's not an autonomous field modality, and all current conceptions of so-called gravity are incorrect. And of course they are. Nor does magnetic attraction exist either. But denying magnetic attraction is not me denying magnetism. It's saying the acceleration of two magnets towards the low pressure point in the ether between the two is not magnetism at all. It's dielectric acceleration. The same thing we call electrostatic cling. By the way, yeah, the same thing you call electrostatic cling, where you like socks and stuff stick to your hand on a dry day. Styrofoam beads stick to your hand. It's the exact same thing we call gravity. There's no difference at all. And that, of course, answers anti-gravity, by the way. When you know that gravity is uh, fields and everything operates off of the right-hand rule, then understanding so-called anti-gravity becomes infinitely easier. And that's the very reason why I created those three little anti-grav toys that are fun to play with. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching, and have a nice day.